I'm Robert Bell. I'm Dawson. I'm Andrew. And this is the Adrenaline Factory. All right, I'm Robert Bell. Uh, we're sitting right here in front of the Infernus. We're gonna do a Q&A real quick. Uh, my media guy has printed off this, the most commonly asked questions about the Infernus. Um, we're gonna go through them. All right, number one, let's see if we can get it here. Why did you choose to build the Infernus? Okay, so when I was younger, I always wanted a Murcielago and as I get older, I kind of realize that that's probably not going to be in the cards for me. So uh, I was slowly getting more and more ability to possibly build a tube chassis car. And just one day scrolling through Craigslist, I actually found a Murcielago body uh, local to us uh, here in the West Bottoms where we moved into. And uh, through a few friends, uh, we were able to get that body. Um, and then in the original build process of it, uh, I kind of realized that with the car scene the way that it is, uh, kit cars don't really get any type of uh, relevance to anything and they're always kind of frowned upon because they're generally done poorly on a, you know, crappy chassis and not done right and it's more so just to look cool and doesn't actually perform well. So I figured just doing slight modifications and actually making it uh, the Infernus from the video game, it kind of changed the entire outlook of the car because then people would pay attention to it more and look beyond the fact that it's just a replica car. And uh, I thought it would just kind of be really cool to build something new and exciting that hasn't been done before. Do you drift the Infernus? Okay, so right now we have not really got a chance to drift it. I have slid it a few times and done, you know, a couple uh, U-turns with it and some donuts. Um, just before this last car show, we were able to actually get the intercoolers and stuff hooked up properly. So we are nearing the point where we can actually slide this thing without it fuel cutting or any of those other issues. So yes, it, this is definitely a purpose-built car for drifting. It didn't have any other intent other than that. So yes, it's gonna be a drift car. Do you have a sponsor? Uh, no, we currently do not have any sponsors. Um, we do have a few companies that we work with uh, that have given us a good deal on stuff. Um, not anything real, real big yet. Uh, WiseFab uh, hooked us up pretty good. They gave us a couple hundred bucks off of each kit. Mishimoto has given us uh, a percentage off on some of their coolers. The Kansai wheels, we were uh, getting a pretty good deal on those. Not huge, but it was a couple hundred bucks off when we ordered them um, and a few others. Uh, we are looking to take some on hopefully because this is just gonna get more and more expensive as we go. What engine is in it? Okay, this one I've definitely seen a few times. So the engine that is in it is a VQ35DE. Uh, it is out of a front wheel drive uh, application. Um, this specific one we got from JDM of California. We get a lot of engines from them. The reason why this was chose is because we do a lot of 350Zs here at the shop and it was just kind of cool and a good advertisement piece for us to use the same type of engine. Uh, the reason why we chose the DE is because the 03 and 04 front wheel drive uses the same internals as the uh, rear wheel drive, so we can do a forged bottom end on this uh, pretty easily. Um, so that's the reasoning why we did that. What donor chassis did you use? That's another good one I've seen. This is not a donor chassis. Um, and it is not mocked up after anything. I completely designed this chassis in-house and we built it 100% in-house. It's built out of 095 DOM roll cage tubing and the only thing that we used uh, that even resembled a vehicle was the suspension, which we decided to go with, well, I decided to go with the Mazda RX-8 suspension because I like the long arm uh, travel and the multi-link. 
Uh, I also needed to do a coilover setup that was gonna be below the height of the tire, so when we put the body on it, it wasn't going to hinder us from going extremely low, because I, I definitely dig the slammed car chassis look, so uh, we had to do that style of suspension or possibly Corvette to uh, achieve that look. How much did the build cost? Well, that can't be fully answered yet because we're still building this and every time I think that we are out of the woods, something else comes up. So uh, I think the last time I really calculated anything, we were about $38,000 in hard parts and that's not including any labor of any type. And that's basically everything. Everything for this was pretty much bought new except for like the transmission. Uh, we pulled it from a used car. I've got two of them actually. Um, but pretty much everything else was bought brand new for this build. So I'm definitely gonna do a full write up on what the cost was when we're done. When do you think it will be finished? Um, about seven months ago is when it was supposed to be finished. Um, but realistically, we are trying to finish the bodywork and have this thing, if not 100% done, at least ready to be painted uh, by spring of next year. All right, so this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and add one personally that I've seen a few times. Um, we always get asked about the taillights, if it's gonna resemble the Infernus. Um, I really badly wanted to, but looking at the car more and more, I don't understand the reason why the taillights were done the way that they are. Um, if you guys have seen it, it's a red upper and lower on the inside taillight, and then it's a amber and clear light on the outside. Well, during driving at night or whatever, that inside light would be lit red, but the outside light wouldn't have anything and it would have a lot of body outside of the lighting, which I feel would not look right. So we've talked about possibly changing the light setup where it's red on top on both and then a clear inner light and then a amber outer light. That way it has a running light on the inside and outside of the body. And I think that would be subtle enough where you wouldn't be able to tell that they were much different. The other idea was uh, on some of our renders, we have some kind of hollowed out lights that are just circular to keep in mind. And a lot of that was based off the fact that we didn't want to do a full copy of the Infernus. We wanted to make it look like we originally started with one and then we modified it. Mo much like you would buy aftermarket headlights or taillights or a wide body kit or a spoiler or things like that. Um, so we're still toying around with the idea, but I do like the thought of having the Pokeball style taillights on the car. I think, you know, it would be a sweet thing to have it very closely resemble the car. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next video.